ocean adventure with Giraffe World Tours. Written and read by Ingrid Silvestri. With music by Ingrid Silvestri and Trevor Sewell. An ocean adventure with Giraffe World Tours. All aboard now, called Captain Gurgle. He leaned over the edge of the coning tower of the submarine. All aboard Neptune's chariot. Me first, yelled Necky Becky and started climbing up the long ladder. You next, Raff, said her mum, Maureen. Necky Becky's dad paused with his foot on the bottom rung of the ladder. Do you think I should make a speech? he asked. To commemorate our first Giraffe World Tours trip in our new submarine. No thanks, Dad, said eldest daughter Nexie. We'd be here all day. Raff sighed and straightened his neck. The submarine swayed on its tall landing legs as he made his way up the ladder. Couldn't be a better day for you, shouted Captain Gurgle as the warm autumn sun beamed down. We'll be ready to set off in about five minutes, so hurry on now. We're just waiting for Uncle Gurth to bring the picnic, said Maureen, looking along the beach. Gurth's picnics were as famous as his restaurant, the Gleeful and Greedy. The family all thought eagerly of their lunch as they climbed up into Neptune's chariot. For the next five minutes, they stood in the coning tower, looking excitedly out to sea, towards the island where they were to moor their vessel. Necker Reef Island, sighed Nexie. It sounds so romantic. I wonder if there'll be pirates there. There might be buried treasure, said Necky Becky. House can dig it up. Her little Nexon dog capered around happily at the sound of his name. Going to have to set off, said Captain Gurgle. The tide'll be wrong if we wait any longer for your picnic to arrive. I've got some sailor's biscuits in the hold which we can eat instead. Everyone's necks drooped a little. Dry sailor's biscuits instead of one of Gurth's picnics. However, the prospect of their underwater outing soon revived their spirits, and as the submarine's engines whirred into life, they all stood craning their necks towards the horizon. The submarine's lanky legs carried them jerkily into the shallows. The water got deeper and deeper, and they all felt the strong current pulling against the craft. Legs away! shouted Captain Gurgle, and with a loud creaking, the submarine's legs were retracted, and splish splash, Neptune's chariot was floating in the gentle waves. When are we going underwater, Captain Gurgle? asked Necky Becky. See that dark green colour in the sea? said the captain, pointing towards the island. That's where the water gets really deep, so we'll have to go below deck and fasten down the hatch. The family enjoyed the sea spray on their faces for a few minutes. As they drew close to the deep water, one by one, they went down into the submarine and Captain Gurgle closed the hatch above them. It was very comfy inside the vessel, even though it was too low to straighten up their necks. By each little round window was a long, squashy sofa to recline on and watch the sea life outside. Ooh, fishes! cried Nexie as she lay on her sofa. Outside the submarine, the ocean was teeming with life. There were fish of all sizes, shapes and colours, swimming around, blowing bubbles. 
Some of them looked in at the windows, and Necky Becky pulled fishy faces at them. Captain Gurgle had switched the big headlights on, and there were smaller lights all round the submarine, so the dark, mysterious seabed was illuminated. What a different world! exclaimed Maureen. I think I'll write an article about this for the Northern Necco, said Raph, and in my blog. Nexie rolled her eyes and groaned. It would probably bore people so much it'd put them off our tours, she said witheringly. Better just stick with the adverts I've designed, Dad. Maureen patted her husband's arm. I'm sure it would be wonderful, dear, she said. Necky Becky had been staring fixedly out of the porthole right at the front. She suddenly sprang forward on her sofa. What's that? she exclaimed. He looks like a wreck. The family peered forward as the ship's lights penetrated the deep dark water ahead. Sure enough, not far away, partly hidden behind some rocks, lay the remains of a large ship. A pirate ship, breathed Nexie. Treasure! squeaked baby little Nicky. Can we go and look? asked Ralph. I've got two diving suits on board, said Captain Gurgle. I'll have to wear one as guide, so that leaves one for me, 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 shrieked Necky Becky, jumping up so suddenly that she banged her head on the ceiling. Please, Dad! I don't see why not, said Ralph. I look after the sub while Captain Gurgle's outside. Just for a few minutes, said Captain Gurgle as they got into the diving suits. He opened the first of the pressure doors and Necky Becky went eagerly through. It was the most fantastic experience of her life. As she walked carefully behind Captain Gurgle, shoals of little fishes swam around her, butting against her helmet. Brightly coloured coral and little sea urchins gleamed on the ocean floor and even on the ancient timbers of the wreck.